this is Andy too. In my last video, I uh, showed you how I take out and put back in the light switch. And in this video, we're going to take out the Singer light. Uh, how to how to disconnect the wires and pull them up through the opening in the body and take the uh, lamp shade and socket housing and everything off. And then uh, put it, you know, how to put it back on, and uh, how it is wired to the three-pin connector here. How it's supposed to be wired. Okay. So to start that, I want to take off the light bulb, and uh, it's it's kind of a, a a pain here, you know. Later how Singer made these was so the lampshade came off and you could get to the bulb. Pretty pretty tight fit back in here um, to get to get a hold on it and you, you know you have to push it in a little bit and then uh, turn it let's see it should turn towards the front of the machine the little bayonet pins will line up and we can pull it out but it's just hard to <laughs> get a grip on a, on a glass bulb like that. So I usually just take a, a rubber band and wrap it around the bulb uh, two or three times. And it, you know, that rubber band on there, somewhat tight, you know, so it's not, so it's not loose. That gets a better grip on the bulb than my fingertips can and then my fingertips can get a pretty good grip on the uh, rubber band and I've had pretty good pretty good luck if you can see I've got this rubber band wrapped around there now I've had pretty good luck uh, getting that out that it doesn't push in very far, you know, at, at all, but it, it should push in a little bit and then uh, rotate. I'm pretty sure it rotates. It's got to rotate one way or the other. <laughs> uh, let's see, put it in. Well, let me try rotating it back because it does. I don't know how long the bulb's been in there. Okay, it rotates back. My apologies these little and, and the rotation of that pin would be like that <laughs> just just a little bit you know you stick it in rotate it to the back and it locks in okay Whew. now uh, just like we did to uh, take the switch off we have to take the switch down off of the machine on the inside to get to the wire from the light that is connected to the switch. One wire connects to the switch by a screw and the other wire connects to the three pin terminal. This is a Bakelite cap if you didn't see the switch video. It's just a little cap that holds on, but the, the switch is actually held in place by a, a 9 uh thin, very thin uh, nut that holds that on. So it, it just takes a little like quarter turn to loosen it up, and then you can take it off by hand. See how thin that is? Now your switch is kind of loose and we're going to push it down in here. Okay, so of course you would have your bottom plate, you know, uh, oil pan, drip pan, whatever you want to call it. And you have to excuse my wiring mess here. Uh, these are supposed to go, these are from the motor and supposed to go. I have one light switch, uh, light switch wire connected to the third pin, the red pin, 
of my new three pin and this is supposed to have a, a kind of a clamp here this is the wire leads inside a lead tube coming from the light and this broken wire is supposed to go uh, to the yellow or number one terminal and it's the only thing that would go so I've got to uh, lengthen this wire and make it long enough to get over here but the other wire from the switch from the um, light is called the white wire and it does screw on to the switch so I'm going to push down on the switch from the top and bring the switch out like that has a little fiber paper uh, insulator and there's our switch and the red lead is soldered but the light lead coming to the switch from the light is just screwed on and we're going to remove that if we want to remove the light itself with the wires we have to unscrew it from the switch okay just a little little screw made a little loop of wire here okay so I'll just let my maybe I'll tuck that in a little bit <laughs> now the lead tube can be bent back straight it's it's pretty firm and you know what uh, I thought about this the other day when I was playing with that I'm gonna put some gloves on when I was a kid our neighbor got lead poisoning from something and man was she sick so <laughs> I was thinking about this the other day that that's uh, lead and uh, maybe it would be a good idea to wear gloves and uh, a viewer wrote to me about that lead can flake off too and I've heard it can flake off and get in the gears and stuff like that so uh, I was given a couple methods um, how to treat that lead and uh, I'm even going to put on a mask I've decided <laughs> So, let me get this on. Okay. So, as I started to say, I, I want to straighten this bent um, lead sheath that's holding the wires. And I'm going to now try and pull it up. Oh wait, I gotta take the singer light screw. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. This is called the singer light screw because it holds the singer light to the body. So let's see how I can get that in the frame here and take that out. Just the one screw. Mm, holds it uh, to to a hole that's right in the casting you know so we'll take that out show you that guy just a round headed screw And move this back just a little. I want you to see there's my wire I'm going to be pushing in as I come up here. And there's like some depressed areas the light fits into. See that? So there's the screw hole. 
and there's like the cutout right here and that's where that wire is so let me um, push that lead tube uh, around a little bit and manipulate this up here and see if we can't get it up here hey okay so let me show you the back side of this um, right um, on the back side uh, on either side of the screw holes there's two little nubs like pins that stick out from here and they go into little holes here so I think that's to brace it and keep the light from twisting and then you have the screw holding the Singer light you know right to there when you see those little nubs you see this recessed area and where I pulled the uh, lead tubing up there you can see it's right next to the gears see that's the top of the vertical shaft right there so I'm starting to understand why they put this wires in a tubing like that I hadn't seen that before and you know the machine is so compact but the wires are kind of the same size as other machines so that that's to protect it and keep it away from the top and bottom gears there I think okay so let's get this up turn it back out of the way and we'll take a little bit a closer look at this this is a socket screw it screws through the back of the of the housing and and this is just called the shade and the socket housing okay and that's the lamp socket screw and inside is the lamp socket and it's a uh, bake light you see down in there those two little pins those contact pins are soldered right on to the end of the wiring that that comes up through that lead tube and then between this socket um, and the socket housing back here the parts manual shows a uh, felt washer kind of like a spool spool pin felt back inside there and then to help keep this uh, wire lead the, the lead tubing and stuff in place here there is a set screw right there and it's just called the light lead set screw okay so we've got the Singer light screw to mount it and we've got the light lead set screw to hold the the lead tube in there and we've got the lamp socket screw on the end to hold the socket so those are the three screws uh, up there okay so the reason that I want to take this out and stuff was to take a look at this wiring um, as I had noticed the first time I opened up the bottom this wire was broken off or cut or something right about here and it did have the cloth covering over it I stripped this cloth covering back to, to examine the wire and the wires a very in very good shape it's just that uh, I need to 
extend the wiring so it will reach the three wire terminal. Mm -hmm. And then this other uh, lead that goes to the switch, it's been moved around enough that the cloth covering here is getting a little weak and starting to fray. So I've got to uh, protect that so that I don't get electricity arcing out of there onto something else. And I've got to extend this wire. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, I had some very good suggestions from viewers. Uh, one had explained the method, how he replaced all this, how he replaced the... Um, um, lead tube, he put all new wiring with little, you know, um, clamps on, on the end little, with circles to go back onto the three pin connector. And he actually disassembled all, all of this up here and those little pins and unsoldered them, so to speak, from the old wire and soldered them on, so, soldered them onto the new wiring and put it all back together and he he wrapped it I th think he said a a, a uh, like a cloth coat hanger wire if I understood him right but he he wrapped up his new wiring too even though it's it's uh, you know coated with vinyl or whatever he he still wrapped them up to protect them and uh, for those of you in into that, that sounds like a really great method. Um, I'm not interested in doing that really because I, I only paid 50 bucks for the machine and maybe you notice that the title of this playlist isn't how to restore a machine. It's can a $50 featherweight be made to sew again? And that's all I want to do is get it working. I had another very generous offer, incredible, of a viewer who offered just to mail me a new one with all intact wiring and everything. And he said, just take that old one out and put the new one in, you know. Uh, he had he had some parts and, uh, you know, said, look, I'm not, it's extra, I'll give it to you. And, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, uh, again, I'm not going uh, to do that. If I can get this stuff to work and safely and get the machine working that's my goal so I'm gonna pause here because I have not exactly come up with exactly how I want to do this because I was cautioned by the viewer who uh, vol you know volunteered to give me a new light system here because uh, it, by the time you get this uh, three pin connector back in here and you get your light switch and you get the motor wires and the light wires and everything he said there's just not room to be doing like wire splicing and stuff in there and uh, he's done this uh, a few machines you know so <laughs> I, uh, I, I think he was taking pity on me for thinking, yeah, I'll splice this wire up somehow, <laughs> you know. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to see what I can do, and uh, when I figure it out, I'll come back and do it, and we'll continue on the video. So for you, it's going to be, you know, like a two-second pause. For me, I don't know how long it's going to take. Okay, yeah. I've come up with my uh, ingenious plan here, <laughs> and I, pr I prepared a short piece of wire. What I'm going to do is um, oh by the way I'm not wearing gloves I, I had a viewer who uh, let me know that this is lead I wasn't sure what it was in the earlier video and he responded that it is lead and uh, he, he told me I can wipe it down with a, uh, oil and uh, I did that just a light coating of sewing machine oil and I've read that in a couple other places and also that if it's bad flaking apart you can lightly brush it with a kerosene and uh, get get the loose particles off so I don't feel as uh, 
much in danger now that I've got a little oil on it. So my plan, uh, I, I thought about different ways to do this. Um, and I'm basically just going to make a pigtail splice here with a new piece of wire. And I'm going to cover it with liquid electrical tape. And on the other end of that wire, I've just made a little loop that I can uh, put on the terminal um, for uh, secure instead of uh, instead of uh, clipping on a, a, a wire termination loop or something like that. I'm, I feel like I'm up against a space problem trying to get all the wires into this little area um, behind the uh, three pin terminal. So that was my uh, plan. What I'm going to do uh, first, I think, here is just tin up this uh, wire loop here a little bit so that it'll, uh, it'll stay together okay. If you, ever, if you ever make any videos like this, and I wish, I wish more people would. I've gotten emails from people that just talk about the work that they've done and and uh, you know the things they've come up with and the methods and it's like man that's amazing and I always try and encourage people I, I wish you'd make a video of that and, and a few people have but but not as many as I wish this is just there we go finally I think I realized what I did wrong. I didn't put a little solder on the iron to transfer the heat. That's what I did. Okay. Whoops, let me wipe that off on the sponge there. So let's take a look at this. Mm -hmm. Just so the strands would stay together. Let's see how that's going to be. Oh, good. You know, to get my loop, all I did was uh, wrap wrap the wire around uh, this barbecue stick like that, and then twist the barbecue stick to make a loop. Because the the stick is just a little bit bigger diameter than uh, the terminal. You know, so it came it came out pretty good, I think, just like that. Okay. So I'm, I'm good with that. Let's see if I can get this uh, over here now and we can get these together. This is a very hard uh, copper wire. It's almost like it's, uh, I don't know, it kind of looks like it has a coating on it, a silver or something coating. I worked with a lot of copper wire in my phone career, but let me tell you, that's that's some stiff copper wire. I'm just going to try and make a very nice, tight uh, pintail. I'm not using a heat shrink. I'm not going to use a heat shrink. I, I, I didn't use a wire nut. I'm not using a clamp on. I'm trying to make a, the smallest uh, footprint that I can get away with so that I have room in this area. To uh, get everything in there, you know. Okay. Now let's try and get this. Uh, Let's try and get this a little. There we go. I'm supposed to. There we go. I didn't do that before. I just put the iron right onto the wire, and I think that's why it took so long to to heat up. It wasn't transferring the heat well at all. Could probably do this from the side of the wire. I don't need a lot of. I don't need a lot of solder on here. I just don't want these wires coming off you know coming coming loose or anything there we go I'll take that 
I'll take that. Now, if you're not, while it's cooling down, if you're not familiar uh, with liquid electrical tape, I've used it in one or two videos before. I, I, I use a brand called Star Bright. Um, and it's, it's kind of like a, a liquid vinyl. Um, you know, and it, and it, and it goes on. Uh, you'll, you'll see it when I put it on. It goes on with the liquid. And they put a brush in here. It's kind of big. Uh, but as it dries, it, it firms up just like, um, uh, you know, a vinyl or rubber coating. And it's uh, waterproof, UVA resistant. It's got very good dielectric strength. I fixed a lot of vintage um, electrical cords. As a matter of fact, the... Uh, neighbor recently uh, the other day brought over a cord that the dog had and she's got a big dog bit bit the cord luckily it wasn't plugged in but it it exposed uh, the didn't really damage the strands but it exposed exposed them a little bit and uh, she asked me if I could uh, fix that in any way so I, I taped it off and then you put this liquid electrical tape on there and uh, you know it, it seals it up and that's what I'm going to be doing with these with this okay so I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and move into that right now into doing that right now the only problem with this is like I had a can of this red that I didn't even use half of the can and I got it out to check it you know after I came up with this plan <laughs> and uh, it it turns into like art eraser <laughs> over time you know the stuff just keeps whatever that is in there it just keeps evaporating and uh, it wasn't usable now I've heard you can put acetone or naphtha in there to uh, soften it back up, but I looked at buying some uh, acetone and or naphtha, and I could only find it in like a one quart can or maybe eight ounce can, and it cost more than this tape. This liquid electrical tape was only uh, six ninety eight. <laughs> At, at Home Depot, you know, and the other stuff was $7.98 and $8.98. So I thought, oh, to heck with it. I'll just, I'll just buy uh, some more liquid electrical tape. And this time the black was in stock. So you have to stir it up good to get it going. And I'm not going to brush it on my pigtail splice here. What I'm going to try and do is dip it. And uh, they mentioned in the instructions here that you can uh, brush it or dip it and I'm just gonna whoa I'm just gonna uh, dip it in there see kind of snotty there and what you can do is you, you let it uh, dry for about five minutes okay and then you can dip it again and you can dip it like every five minutes as many times as you want. You can dip it 10 or 20 or 30 times if you want. Um, to be 100% finished cured, it's a 24-hour uh, setup. You know, 24-hour deal, they say. And uh, so I'm just going to let this... Uh, Just gonna let it, and you you can trim it a little bit. You can shape it um, if you want. I've done some three-way um, splicing on wires. That's you know it's very hard to tape and and hard to heat shrink and everything. A three-way splice, and I've done it with this and and uh, dipped it in there, and it's it's like wow, that's done very good. I even. Uh, I even buried a low voltage landscape lighting after doing that. And, uh, I had it in the ground about seven years before I sold that house and it was still working. 
So I'll be back in uh, five minutes and we'll do another dip. And uh, there's a little worn spot on this cloth cord down here on the other wire. And I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to, uh, and I better close up this stuff. I better close this up because it evaporates quick. <laughs> I'm going to try and get some around that. The, the wires aren't damaged. They're not even exposed. But I'm just going to put some of this on there. And I think I'll try and put a little bit just right under my loop. So I'll see you in uh, five minutes. Okay, it's uh, dry to the touch now. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, give it another dip. And it's hard, it's hard, to, it's hard to see how far I'm dipping it in here. There we go. I wanted to get it up a little bit on those wires. So I don't have any uh, bare spots of bare wire there, you know. And uh, I think I've got that accomplished. That looks good. So I'm going to uh, let this dry here and then we'll be back again. Okay. Rather than keep uh, doing that, I'll just show you the final uh, results here. This is dipped four times in the liquid electrical tape. And uh, it's, it's uh, flexible, uh, waterproof. This liquid electrical tape has a temperature range of negative 50 to a positive 250 Fahrenheit degrees. And I, I'm satisfied with this, with not using a heat shrink or um, uh, anything like that. It's structurally strong from being soldered, and it's not going to be under uh, tension. You know, nothing's going to be pulling on it. There'll be uh, some minor vibration, but that's about it. So I have my soldered uh, loop on the end to go on the terminal and uh, my pigtail splice is secure. I put some of that liquid electrical tape down here. I inspected this and the cloth covering was frayed a little bit, but there was not any um, wiring exposed. So I just put uh, about three coats of the liquid electrical tape here just to stop it from fraying any farther. And then I took a closer look at this uh, other lead that goes up and uh, is screwed onto the switch. Because somebody had made a little wire loop. Uh, I thought it was soldered, but it wasn't. The, the, the wiring in here, the copper has some kind of a little silver coating on it. But what I found out was this uh, loop that was on here uh, <laughs> was just held on to the original wiring by one single strand. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so I ended up taking a, a short piece of wire, trimming this back until I found a, a length, about three quarters of an inch of good clean original wiring and cut it there and took a short piece of this new wire and made a soldered loop on one end for uh, the screw to screw it onto the switch and then I made a uh, inline splice here at the other end with the new wire to the existing wire. Um, let me let me show you here if you're not familiar with that you, you you take your two wires and you expose equal lengths of the wiring and then uh, op open them spread the strands apart a little bit and then you uh, mesh the wiring together like that or weave it or push it together and then just give it a little bit of a twist like that and then you solder that uh, together. 
and that's that's what I did and then I put uh, four coats of the uh, liquid electrical tape over that I, I think four coats was you know overdoing it but uh, it's a brand new can and who knows when I'll use it next it might be all sticky and unusable so might as well right hmm so I think I've got that good then and I temporarily put my um, light bulb back in uh, hook some alligator clips and wire onto here and the, and it works so I have continuity of all my wiring the new and the old right to the light bulb so no problem with that and uh, then what I what I need to do now is to uh, get that wire back down with this uh, mm, lead tube and get it back down through the machine so I can mount the Singer light to the body and terminate these wires on the switch and the terminal. So, let's see if I can get these to go down in here on my new wiring and the old tube. I, I, yeah, it's going to be a little, <laughs> it's going to be a little tight with all that stuff I have, the pigtail and everything, but I think I can get it down in there. I get why they did this lead tube. I just wonder if nowadays there's not something, if you did want to replace that, if there's not something that's, uh, you know, stiff and heat resistant besides lead. <laughs> so let's take a look down here. Oh, I'm coming out under the gear. So I'm going to need to pull that back up a little bit and try and redirect it up above this gear set mm -hmm. I'm just, you know it is an amazing machine here I'm, I'm quite impressed with it but it is smaller <laughs> than than machines I've worked on before you know, even uh, tighter fit than like the little 99K or the 353 Genie that I worked on. Just a snug fit up here. But if you had to replace the light or the wiring, you know, it's, it's doable. A couple times when I was working on this, I thought I should have taken that viewer's uh, offer. He was just going to send me a new light with the wire and everything. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see when it's all done. I got some of it up here. Okay, did I break off any of my new wiring or what? There's my pigtail, and there's the rest of the wiring. Wee! All right, happy to see that, aren't I? Mm-hmm. Of course, I'm going to have to dress that up a lot nicer. But let's go up here and uh, see about putting the... Uh, Putting, attaching the Singer light back into the body. It was made well. I mean, the way they, the way that they uh, made the cutouts in the body and everything for the light to fit in there. Of course, you know we expect that from the Singer machines that we. Yeah, and we worked on. 
and I did, uh, you know, I put the original a bulb back in the socket when I tested it, and it lit up and everything. I'm not sure if this is in there properly. Probably should probably should get out a little bit different skinnier screwdriver there so I'm not rubbing on that light shade so much make sure I got that aha that's what I thought it didn't seem like it was all the way seated okay this up and away from those gears that's the whole the whole idea right and the sled tubing if you go to work on it uh, it's it's a little stiffer than I expected it to be which which is a good thing because once you get it dressed in here and clamped in place you're not you're not going to need to worry that it's going to like drift over into the gearing system or anything, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty good there. Got a nice space from there. Now, uh, I didn't have this little clamp and the screw that holds it that was missing from my machine and a, and a viewer sent sent one to me and uh, I thought, wow that was very very kind of him and I wanted to give him some acknowledgement and he says no I'm just I'm just gonna remain anonymous no big deal you know thanks for your videos and stuff um, so that was his wish to be anonymous but I really appreciate the uh, sending the parts to me Jack oops <laughs> let's get this in here I'm not sure if I should be doing this I might not do that all the way I might have to maneuver that around to get the rest of this wiring in here. So, here's my terminal with the red lead from the switch that has to go in like that so the solder will face uh, away from the front of the machine towards you. And on the back side there is that screw for connecting the wire back so let me get that on one of the uh, spring screwdrivers here and we'll get that started in there and see if that is going to work out okay I was a uh, polishing some brass for my wife the other day and while I had the metal polish out and stuff I, I went ahead and polished up my little spring screwdrivers <laughs> that was a very nice gift that Harlan gave me I sure used them a lot Oh, I think I, I think I barely got that started, threaded, before the screwdriver slipped out. Did I? 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, but look. Uh huh. What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> I didn't put the wire through the hole in the end of the machine, the switch. <laughs> See? You may have noticed some of my other videos when I, I don't edit out my bloopers because I just, you know, hey, stuff happens and I think it's good for uh, people who want to do this work to see what, you know, what can happen. Little, little mistakes you make and, and things like that. Plus, it's probably good, it's probably good for a laugh, right? I'm sure that some of you realized right away, hey, you knucklehead, you didn't, you didn't uh, put the switch through the hole in the machine first. <laughs> See? What uh, are my videos educational, but they can be entertaining, which you don't always find, right? That combination. Oh, brother. I think I'm going to, I think I'm, I'm probably going to be editing this out. <laughs> what do you think? How many times do you want to watch me drop that screw? Okay, luckily the third time was the charm. Now, see if I can get the fiber insulator back on right with the full longer end over the solder wire like so and then I want to get this pushed up through the bottom of the machine into the hole up there Huh. So I can go up here and reattach the switch. Mm hmm. Looks good. Left to right. Okay, so I have my thin nut, if you remember taking that off. What, and what seems like days ago, right? <laughs> and I'll run it down there finger tight. And if I can find my little wrench, I'll snug that up. Okay, can't find my thin 9 16 inch open and wrench probably fell off the back of the workbench there when I was soldering or something so I'm just going to take a plier because I only need to tighten that up a little bit more past uh, hand tight you don't want to over tighten don't want to over tighten that you've got a yeah that's plenty okay then I'm going to put on my little Bakelite cap over that. And uh, I mentioned before, I think, that I, I've had trouble uh, starting this, you know. And you try and move this toggle a little bit to get, to get the cap lined up with the threads on the switch. But by accident, I discovered the other day that if you move the toggle left, it lines everything up perfect. <laughs> There you go. Who knew, huh? So if you go to take the cap on and off, I would move the toggle left. If your machine is like this one, anyway. And, and again, finger tight on this. No, no plier or wrench required on that. Because the cap just sits down and rests on the nut. Okay. Now... Let's get back in here and see what we have done. Get my motor wires out of the way. 
So we have the red lead from the switch is on our red terminal. Okay. Which is going to sit like that. And I now have the, maybe I'll show you that wiring uh, picture again, okay? Okay, so you see that the other lead from the light, which they call the yellow lead, is going to go on terminal 1, which is the yellow terminal, the yellow number 1 there. Okay, and it's going to be over on the opposite side because the terminal's going to sit like this. Okay, so I have to get this uh, wire over to the other side. And I'm going to move my white switch wire down in there and I'm going to put my pigtail down in there and this is why I didn't want to use wire nuts or anything like like that because I wanted the flexibility because I'm still going to have to get these motor wires up here after I work on the motor so I'm going to bring this yellow light lead out here and we're going to Put it on the yellow number one terminal is the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad I extended that wire a little bit. I mean I've got to have enough to work on out here, right? <laughs> it's it's uh, then the way I read the instructions was that the the little washer goes on top of the wire and then of course I'm going to have the the Bakelite nut which is really a brass nut inside has to terminate and screw on to all that and squeeze the washer down onto the wire loop that I made and secure it Maybe you notice in the diagram that this lead is the only thing that goes on to terminal one. The motor wires, one's going to go on number two. And one is going to stack up with the red wire from the switch on terminal three. So we'll have that fun when we go to do the motor. Now I want to see, can I... Did my crazy plan work? Have I added too much wire in here? Or can will I be able to close this up? Ooh, there we go. I think I can do it. And I still have room in here for the two motor wires. You see that? So I think I'm going to be okay. All right. So, I'll just leave that for now, but I want to go ahead and do like a final dressing of this uh, lead tube up away from, it's kind of funny, maybe I, can, maybe I can turn this a little bit of an angle at the end here. So I want that tube to come in under the clamp straight but I want it then to bend up and away from my gearing right so I need a little a little dog leg I guess we could call it in here okay let's just try that and let's see the clamp and screw that Mr. Anonymous gave me can hold that in securely and keep it from 
shifting around over time as the machine vibrates. I think it will. Okay, that feels pretty secure. Just, eh, just a little, just a little. Let me see if I can just snug up a little bit more. Mm. My screw tip wants to stick in there. So if you can see in here now, hopefully, I've got I've got plenty of clearance in here of the tube up away from it as far as it'll go. You know, and I can get my finger between the gear teeth and the lead sheath. So I think I'm good on that. And uh, let's see. I guess I will go ahead and screw this in and make sure I don't have a surprise later that uh, I don't have room for something because it is a snug fit as you see in there. Let's see if I can get my screws started in the right place. Have I got a piece of wire? Uh oh I should have I should have said okay folks that's it we're all done. <laughs> I wonder if I got that wire lead in front of the screw hole or something. Oh, I think I was just a little bit low. I think it's going in there very well now. Again, Bakelite. Strong, but it can be a little brittle when it's this old. So. Ta-da! I got a little room left for my motor wires. I think I'm going to be good. So I guess that's what I'll be doing next. Since we've got uh, taken a look at how to get the light on and off the machine. Oops. Better snug that up a little bit. Hmm. See that? I thought I had that screw tight. I'll tighten that screw under there. But now that we know how to do that and uh, I think next we're going to take off the motor, remove the motor from the machine here. And I've got to learn how to open this up and what's in there because there's loop points. And and uh, I see I've got some Bakelite screw caps here. I'm thinking this is for one of the motor brushes. All right? And here's another loop point down here. I quit running the motor because uh, it's it started to make a little bit of noise and I thought man I don't even know if there's any lubrication in there so I ran it quite a bit trying to find my clicky stuff and so I, I quit that until we can take a look inside okay Lala you're coming along pretty good for a $50 machine Thanks for tuning in and uh, watching this one, and I hope you'll come back and uh, see what's in that motor when, when we get into there. Okay, so everybody take care and uh, try and stay safe <laughs> with this uh, pandemic around the world. It's really something. I'm very happy to have a hobby like this uh, since we are stuck at home. I hope you're all safe. Take care.